Adaptive empty? What on earth is this? To what does it adapt to? Is it worth your while? Well, in this video, I'll demonstrate the actual impact of modern empty adaptive features on a translator work. What to expect from these and when do they actually do something. Knowing that should help you to learn how to use better this tool to your own advantage. And to be honest, uh, when coming into testing this, I was a bit skeptical about the effectiveness of these adapt features because I had played with other adaptive features in the past and the results were a bit disappointing. But this time it actually does work. So I decided to make a video, but it works for what? Well, basically the adapt capabilities mean that the tool will learn from human feedback. Hence, this is where the human in the loop slogan comes from. That's the idea. With these tools, the goal is to reduce the time a translator will spend editing empty suggestions. So you still have to do editing work. We're not expecting the empty to do everything perfectly, but with the human feedback, you will reduce in time, uh, the time and the effort you spend on editing. Um, with these tools, you need at the moment with the modern MT adapt features, you need to use a dedicated connector and such connectors are available at the moment in SDL, MemoQ and MateCat. And it is coming to other tools too. Uh, by the end of 2020, it should be available in WordFast Pro 5. So let's start testing this, shall we? The modern MT adapt feature works on three levels. So first the context. So that's on the whole document. Second translation memory. So that's a translation memory that you have on the modern MT cloud. And then uh, third, the translators segment edit. So to make sure all this actually does something, I created a test method and will display the result in this video to see if it makes sense to use this and how to make the most out of it. So let's go into the text method. First, I wanted to test the context adapting feature. This actually is supposed to check all your document and remember the whole context to adapt the modern empty output to the document. So to test it first, I pre-translated the text in a manner to make sure the adaptive features would be turned off. So I connected only the API and did not use the dedicated modern empty connector that gave me the raw output. Next, I pre-translated a copy of the same document using then the dedicated modern empty connector in SDL Trados. And the goal here is to leverage only the context feature. And then comparing the two docs with track changes in uh, Microsoft Word that enables to see the differences. So here you have uh, an example of a source segment. Then that's the compared uh, output between the two ways with and without the context adapt. So here is the output without context adapt. So that's the raw output. And here we have uh, the output with context adapt turned on. So we can see uh, big differences between uh, the two segments, but basically uh, what it does and it helps uh, the language flow better and make a little more sense. So as we see here, this output is not completely perfect, but uh, when we read, read here, for example, retrieves, retrieves the status of the connector, it does uh, look better and it, it requires less editing. So what happens actually is that when you open your file for the first time, Modern MT analyzes the whole file and keeps the findings as information that will be used to influence the translation output given by Modern MT. And this is useful to make text generated more relevant to the domain being translated and make translation more natural as we saw in this example. Now, the next thing to test is the use of TM in the modern empty cloud. 
So this has absolutely nothing to do with the TM that is already active in your CAD tool. So that's in SDL here. What you need to do is to get a TM you want Modern MT to use as a reference and then upload it to their cloud. So this is done here in the Modern MT connector. You can decide to use the TM you want from those you have uploaded to the cloud. And you can decide to update it or not. And in a few moments, I'll explain uh, further what it does. But having a TM here will force Modern MT to check uh, the reference TM to adapt the output to match the style and terminology from uh, the TM. So let's look at the testing method. So first I uploaded and selected the TM. I got a separate pre-translation using the TM on the cloud and I compared this with uh, the output I had in the previous step that had only uh, the context in use and uh, not TM related. So when we compare them, uh, this is uh, what we get. And uh, the TM I used in Modern MT uh, to, to do that test was uh, obtained from translating the user interface of Wordfast Anywhere. So that shows here. So let's uh, let's have a look. So this here is uh, the source uh, uh, segment in French, in French, and here we have uh, both outputs compared, as we just, uh, as we said before, and here you have the context only output, okay, uh, and I highlighted where the difference lies. It's quite interesting. Here, this is. Uh, the output influenced by the translation memory. And in Wordfast Anywhere, as in any CAD tools, uh, there is the talk about uh, character count. And here, instead of using number of Unicode characters, it transformed it into Unicode character count, which is something that uh, we use uh, character count in uh, translation tools. So we see here that the translation has been influenced by what was in the translation memory that is on modern MT cloud. So that can be very interesting if you want really your output to be influenced by what you have translated in the past and know that is good for uh, your translation. So now, now let's talk about a feature that I think will be very useful to translators as well. And that is the translators segments update. With this feature, what happens is that the edits that you apply to the segments translated, when you commit them, they are sent back to the modern empty cloud and added to your TM that is on the cloud. So this means that in time, you can force the empty to use terminology and style that you prefer in the empty output. And to enable this function, you need to tick the box beside the TM you want to use as a reference here. So here you can see that I have a TM called My Active Updates and I have ticked the box Update. So use and update, uh, it makes then uh, this feature work. So to demonstrate that it works, what I did was I forced Modern MT to translate wrongly a term, okay? So here, the source uh, term uh, in French is paramètre, and that is usually translated correctly by settings or parameters, which was the original modern MT output. But I wanted to test the feature to force it to be changed to choices, okay? So that's my user change. So to get this to work, uh, in SDL here, each time Modern MT gave me preferences or settings as a translation, I edited the segment to replace that term with the word choices. And after I did that on seven segments, then I got a segment, this one here, okay, where Modern MT this time did not translate preferences or settings at all. So then I added again the word choices and then, fair enough, as you can see here on this segment, Modern MT offered me choices as a translation. So you can see here uh, with the look this has that this is unedited empty. 
this here is edited empty, but this here is unedited empty. So we really influenced modern empty to translate with the word that we wanted. So you can imagine uh, what it could do in the long run for the specific terms that you or your client wish to use. Basically, the goal of all these features uh, together is to help you re reduce the editing effort required on your part as the system is actually learning from you and from the way you translate. So now that we explained how the adapt functions work, let me give you my recommendations so you can get the best results possible. So here are my recommendations regarding privacy and data safety. Well, if you are using adaptive features in Modern MT, this will require that your text is sent to Modern MT so that the engine can analyze your source data, uh, your TM and your changes to the target. Of course, they do have a protective data policy and you can erase your data and erase your account. Uh, all that uh, can d be made to disappear. So you can access to change these things on the modernmt.com uh, page. And they have statements about this and ISO certifications displayed on the main page. So they want to make this uh, very uh, secure. But as always, as a translator, you should check with your client if they accept that you use this type of services. Second, you must make sure that your document has adequate returns and other things that will uh, help to have optimal segmentation. Bad segmentation affects adversely empty output. And I give you my opinion here. The funky way that SDL plays with segmentation uh, for helping with uh, segment leverage from uh, your TM actually worsens a little uh, the empty output. In my opinion, word for segmentation is better uh, for use with empty. Third, when you upload a TM, if you know how to do it, I suggest that uh, you clean uh, your TM before uploading it uh, to the modern empty cloud by removing tags, removing inconsistencies and in target and inconsistencies in source and removing, removing TUs that have no usefulness for uh, the MT to learn like figures, percentages, grids, uh, chapter numbering, etc. These could be useful to get perfect matches the classical way in your cat, but in my opinion, they are uh, worthless for influencing MT. So basically, good clean text with good translation is the best to uh, upload to the, um, the cloud. It would make sense that if you have different uh, TMs on modern MT, you should use different TMs for different domains. As an example, uh, you would have a TM used for medical, another TM used for legal, etc. So, and then that would be the best practices you could have uh, when you are working in your segment, uh, the fifth point here. So make sure that you're using a TM that has to do with your domain so that you would get actually what you're really looking for, uh, for the type of document that you are translating. So that's how it works, but it doesn't end there, hopefully, because I really would like to have your feedback on using these features in your own workflow, in your own language base that you are using to see if they are useful to you, meaningful to you. So please uh, uh, talk about it in the comments below because I'm really look forward to hearing uh, your feedback on this. And if you found this video useful, I hope you did. Uh, be sure to leave a like, please, and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos like this in the future. So I look forward to talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.